Okay, we're back at the allotment. I've just pulled up and uh, I've just uh, just been working on the van. Got some new wheel trims and giving it a little bit of a clean. Looks much better than it was. Um, anyway, sorry, changing the subject slightly. Okay, um, now what I did, just an experiment. We've had this gorgeous, brilliant sky. It's just been like that for the last four days, five days even. Um, and last night I came here and I actually closed both doors on the polytunnel. That's gone quite saggy. Um, anyway, I just want to test what the temperature's like inside. Now I'd imagine it's quite moist because there's condensation on the inside, which I haven't seen for quite a few days because I've generally been leaving the polytunnel open. So as I walk in, oh, it is like a Turkish bath in here. That is unbelievably hot. That's fantastic. So I really reckon my sweet corn is going to do really well in here. At least that's the, uh, the idea I've got going. Oh, I, honestly, I, I can feel the sweat just wanting to start dripping off me already. I've only been in here a few seconds. Ah, fantastic vine. That's me other vine that's just arrived. That's um, uh, Anthony on the end. Um, he's uh, he, he promised me uh, another vine so I, I, I can go there. So I can get that planted today. That's wonderful. Excellent. That must have been delivered last night because I was here yesterday. Um, right, I need to get on. Now, the, the thing with the, the ground, even though I tilled this over the other day, it's so dry. It's just really, really hard. It's like these little rock-hard little balls of clay. And I'm wondering if anybody knows whether there is a some sort of a tool. Uh, I, I keep seeing these like three-pronged digging tools that you put in and twist. Um, I'm wondering if there is some sort of a tool that will that will break this up because the rotavator, all the rotavator seems to be doing is just pushing it around. It's not really crunching this stuff up. Now I know next year uh, if I leave this over winter then the frosts will get at this and the frosts will break it up because what happens is it, uh, it gets saturated with water then the water freezes and as it freezes it expands and then it just kind of breaks apart everything. So next year this should be a nice fine till um, if I get my timing right with the rotivator and I don't end up rotivating into little balls like I've done here. Uh, which I, I think you know I, I think a lot of this problem is my own fault because I just rotivated it so much when it was wet I actually turned it into these little balls so I think what I'll do next year is I'll wait until the weather has got warmer before I even start rotivating you know so I'll make sure we've gone right through all the frosts um, and then I may, may not even need to rotivate I might, might just get away with just kind of giving it a little dig or a rake over um, but that's next year I'll worry about that next year but for this year um, I think the only thing I can do really is to just whenever I'm going to plant something I'll, I'll dig out a trench or a hole, fill it with compost and then put the seeds or, or the, the actual plants in the ground and then just kind of cover them over like this and hopefully that will tide me over for this year. I've got to step back in here again, I just can't get over this warmth, it's unbelievable. It's going to be hard to work in here actually in this kind of temperature. Um, but I certainly wouldn't want to be digging in, the, in this kind of temperature. I think I'd have to leave the door open. But, uh, yeah. Okay, right, I'm going to get on. And uh, I'm going to uh, put that vine in, I think. I've got some, still got some of that really potent horse manure. There it is, I think. I think it's that one. Might be this one. No, it's this one. Okay, so I'm going to dig a hole, put the manure in, put the vine in puts a bit more um, compost over the top and then a bit more soil and then we're ready to go with the other vine. So still no... Is that a little bud we've got coming on there? There are some little buds but they look a little dormant. Let's have a quick look on this one. Uh, same here. Um, but apparently, according to um, the, the, the people who owned it before, they just said you just chop them right back and they grow back each year. And they're quite a vigorous grower, so uh, well we can but try. Now before I get started, I've just spotted my um, these are garlic. They're going yellow on the tips. I'm not sure what that means. If anybody's got any tips on this, now I did 
spray a little bit of feed. Um, I bought a big packet of something called Vitax Q4 and it's like a powder, it's a, it's a fertiliser and I just sprinkled a small amount of fertiliser um, all over the beds, all, all over the beds actually and then kind of watered it in and I'm wondering if this has something to do with it or whether these are getting sunburned um, but if anybody knows what I can do about this yellowing whether there's anything to be done or whether it's supposed to be like that um, I don't know, maybe they're a bit dry I'm going to water them while I'm here uh, but I would really appreciate your uh, your feedback and your comments. So have a quick look at my worms. I didn't bring any feed with me again. I keep... Um, uh, I might be a little bit too wet actually. I'll leave that out for a little while. I'll, I'll leave the lid off because there's a lot of moisture in there. And I don't think they like it too wet. There's plenty of worms in there. They're, they're definitely working their way through this cardboard. And I believe it said that a worm can eat half its weight um, in stuff every day, or is it every week? I can't remember. I'll have to go back to the, uh, the instructions and have a look. I uh, got a few down the bottom there. They've gone through. So um, they normally try to escape when they're not that happy. Um, I'll. I think what I'll do is I'll come and put put a bit of food on here, some kitchen scraps, and uh, see whether that makes any difference. If not, I'll address the uh, the handbook and see whether I can do something um, differently. But I'm going to leave that lid off while I'm here. I'll put the lid there just so that that reminds me that I've left the lid off, so I don't. Uh, I hopefully won't run over it on my way out. Um, the tulips are looking great. Look at these really uh, really growing big now and uh, I think it's only a matter of a short amount of time before they start um, sprinkling a uh, sprinkling um, some, you know producing flowers which would be great should look good no sunflowers coming through yet plenty of grass oh 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 is that a sunflower? That doesn't look very sunflowery, to be honest. And I planted a sunflower there, so that's something else. Uh, might be an onion, actually, left over from the rose I planted in there, so I'll leave that. But I'm going to pull all this grass. But yeah. Um, oh. No grass, don't want grass. Okay, any sign of the parsnips or the, oh they're both parsnips, hollow crown it's called. Got something here, but I don't think, no that's not in the line of fire where I buried them. Uh, it's probably a weed, so that's coming up. There we go, that's gone. In fact that looked like a bit, bit dandelion-ish. So I have to stay on top of this stuff. Weeds are going to be my biggest enemy this year and cooch grass as well. Now these have been sat out in the sunshine for quite a few days. I don't think they like it. If you look at those shoots they really don't look very healthy. So I'm going to move those today and I think I'll probably put them inside, I don't know, the polytunnel perhaps? Rocket. Uh, I think it's a bit early to put them in the ground because Oh, I don't know, should I put them in the ground? Hmm. But yeah, these definitely don't like being out here. Look, the, the ends look almost singed. Um, so I might just plant them in the ground and be done with it and just kind of see what happens. If you've got any suggestions, again, this is, uh, this is where I'm hoping to call on the experience of others to uh, kind of guide me through these um, this first year. Because a lot of this I'm just kind of making up as I go along, you know. So, um, okay, right, on with planting the, um, the vine. Okay, we've got the vine in, and it's gone in with uh, lots of compost, lots of manure. Uh, it's firmed down nicely. All I've got left to do is uh, to water it. And then we'll just kind of let that settle in for a few weeks. And hopefully it should start uh, doing its thing. Look at that one of water on it. 
there's not a lot else I can do here really today. Um, I'm still just waiting on everything uh, growing at home. Uh, you saw in my last video all the seed trays we got going. I have got a bit of a problem with my cucumbers, uh, not cucumbers, with the cabbages. Um, in those little seed trays, um, they've, they've come up to, I don't know, about an inch and a half long, and then they're just kind of dying off. They're kind of going, the leaves are going brittle. So I'm not quite sure uh, what that is. It, I've got a feeling it might be that the soil is um, a bit depleted, uh, because I think some of the soil I used for potting my seedlings, um, I grew potatoes in last year. Uh, I think there's a bit of a mix up in some of the soils, but what I think I'll probably do is start some more off in some soil that I definitely know is, uh, or some compost that I definitely know is, is uh, safe to use. Um, and we'll try that. Now one thing I've noticed we're definitely not short of here is spiders. So I can get some... <laughs> can't find any. I was just watering this and they were running out everywhere. Little spiders everywhere. Now I'm not a great lover of spiders, there's one. I'm not a great lover of spiders, but... Um, where are we? There. But there's another one. A little jumping spider. See him? There's another one. There's a whole, must be a whole nest here somewhere. There's another one. And another, and another. Um, there's hundreds of them. Just kind of little, little jumping spiders everywhere. I think there's a load in the compost as well. You've only got to tap the compost. You can see all the spiders everywhere. Um, now, I'm not a great fan of spiders. Uh, I'm a little bit of a wuss when it comes to uh, spiders, but spiders are great for the garden because they don't eat anything that you grow, but they do eat insects that feed on your, your, the, the produce. So I'm hoping with all these spiders, and I, I've seen loads and loads of them in the polytunnel, the, the, the quite big ones they've taken up residence. Let's see if we can spot some. Um, they, they tend to like running along the back end here. If I was just to do that, yeah, look, there's one, there's one. They're hidden away now, but uh, whenever I'm in here, they're just always running around. Uh, they're not going to come out to play now. They now got the camera. There's one. But uh, obviously, as time goes on, they're going to get bigger and uh, hopefully get a bigger appetite. And. Uh, that means we're kind of we're well on track to being looked after um, inside the polytunnel as well uh, from nature. So I'm really hoping that the spiders are going to build their webs and do whatever it is they do, um, and they're going to be looking after my my produce. And uh, I think my my arachnophobia is going to be up for some serious desensitisation this year. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but. Uh, I'm going to certainly get used to them, but uh, out here they're just they're 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 a gardener's best friend, just like the worms. So there we go. Just a little note on spiders there. Now I've bought my uh, my potatoes into the poly tunnel, and I'm keeping the doors shut at the moment because it's uh, that the heat is causing the uh, the ground to become or the, the whole area in here to become nice and moist. And uh, I'm, I, I don't know whether that's a good thing or not, but um, the kind of a moist, warm uh, environment I'm hoping is going to be really great for certain types of plants, including my sweet corn. Uh, but I bought a rocket in here because they're not in direct sunlight in here. They've kind of they've got this this polythene going on. It's kind of a um, it's got this kind of milky um, thing going on, which which blocks out a bit of the sunlight. Because they didn't look very happy out uh, over there. So um, I haven't, you know, I know you're supposed to, when you chip them, you're supposed to kind of leave them in little egg cups and uh, egg boxes and stuff. But I haven't got anything like that. So I'm just kind of, kind of just leave them here and uh, see whether they start sprouting. Because like I say, the sprouts they've got at the moment, they just they look a bit pathetic. They're not very good at all. So I'm wondering um, if these are going to be any good or not. But I'll just give them some time. And if they don't chit, then I'll... Uh, I don't know whether to just plant them anyway, or um, I, I don't know. I'm undecided on that. So uh, any tips would be uh, most appreciated. Most appreciative. I can't speak today.
any tips would be most appreciated. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to sign off here and I'll catch up with you very soon in the next video. Take care.